Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And the title of today's session comes from, well, it actually comes from uh, Roger and Rebecca Merrill, but I first came across it in the work of Stephen Covey in the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in his chapter on time, he shared the, the Merrill's model of, of four-quadrant time management. And if you imagine, if you've got a piece of paper and want to sketch this out, you can. But if you imagine a, a box divided into four squares, so the top left would be square one, quadrant one, top right would be quadrant two, bottom left would be quadrant three, bottom right would be quadrant four. And what, what he pointed out is that you can, you can divide pretty much anything that we have to do in any given moment into those four quadrants based on urgency and importance. In other words, how quickly does something need to be done and how much does it matter that it gets done? Now, if you're drawing this out or you're trying to visualize this, the, the top row are things that are important. So quadrants one and two are things that are important and your bottom row is things that are, are relatively unimportant. Your left-hand column are things that are urgent so they need to be done now. There is a time limit. There is a relevant, tight time frame. And the things on the right-hand column are non-urgent. So if you think about the, the four quadrants, quadrant one are things that are urgent and important. And they're the things that you, you probably don't even need to put on a to-do list because you're going to get them done because they have to get done. They're the fires that you're always putting out. They're the things that... Uh, you know, taxes are due tomorrow. Uh, you're, you've got a, 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 a sore mouth and you've got to get to the dentist or you can't do anything else. You've got a plane to catch it's, and it's to somewhere that you really want to be. So these are the things that, that they're like the have-tos on a traditional time management system. Quadrant three, I'm deliberately sk skipping quadrant two to the end. Quadrant three are things that they're urgent, like, you know, Tickets go on sale tomorrow, but they're unimportant to you in the sense that they're tickets to a show you don't really want to see. Or, uh, y you know, it's, it's anything that has a, 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 a looming deadline, but ultimately it doesn't really matter to you if it gets done on time. And it's surprising how many things are, are in that column where it's like, oh, my God, I got to do this. But if you really look at it, it's like it doesn't matter if you don't. Quadrant four are things that are both unimportant and non-urgent, and that would be D in most uh, time management lists, the things that are like, yeah, well, you probably shouldn't be spending time on stuff like this anyways. Um, most of my, my video gaming time would probably fit into non-urgent and unimportant, except that I really enjoy it, so I make it important anyways. But quadrant two is the holy grail. Quadrant two are things that are important. In other words, they matter to you. You really want them to get done. But they're non-urgent in that there are really no immediate consequences to them not getting done now. Flossing is one of the ones that always comes to mind for me when I'm, when I'm trying to explain quadrant two to people. It really makes a big difference over time. But on any given day, if you don't floss, you, you're not going to notice the the downside to that for probably years, months at, 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 the, at the short end. Similarly, when it comes to work, there are all sorts of things that don't have to be done now, but they do make a difference. They're the, the relationships that you foster. They're the, the skills that you develop. They're the, the bits of the craft that you want to uh, get better at that it, it, nobody cares, you're fine, you're able to keep going as you are. But over time, the difference it would make to put extra time on those skills, those crafts, those learnings would make a huge difference. Now, the reason that Quadrant 2 is so helpful as a time management tool is because it, it rarely occurs to us to prioritize things that are non-urgent. 
And yet, what I've found in the work that I do with clients and in my own work is that it's by prioritizing those things that matter, and they matter because I say they matter. They matter because I make them important. I used to say that the most important choice you make is what you choose to make important. They're genuinely non-urgent. There's no immediate consequence to not getting them done. But over time, the benefit or cost of not getting them done or getting them done is huge. And so as an experiment, because the easiest way to get this for yourself, if you haven't already kind of got it, is to write up, take your to-do list if you have a to-do list, write up a to-do list if you don't, and just divide it in. You can literally draw it into the boxes if you want to use the boxes. What, what on your list is urgent and important, as in there is a real-world consequence to not getting it done this week or today? What is genuinely urgent but also not terribly important to you? What is on your list but really you don't care and really it could happen anytime? But then what, what's in quadrant two? What in your list is non-urgent but really would make a difference and really does matter to you? And when you've got your list, and you may find if you kind of sit with it this week, you'll find more things will find their way into that list. What most people do is they have everything in urgent and important, and consequently, they never really get any of the other stuff done because they've learned, I get everything in that first quadrant one done, so everything is quadrant one. But if you take a step back, you'll start to find that the stuff in quadrant two is kind of the most satisfying stuff on your list. And my suggestion, my invitation, the experiment I am offering you in today's podcast is once you get a sense, get a feel for quadrant two, move in. Spend as much of your time in quadrant two as you can on stuff that matters to you, that matters in your world. But it doesn't really matter that you get it done today. It doesn't have that sense of have to or urgency. I'm sure there will still be fires. I'm sure you'll still spend plenty of time in quadrant one. I'm also sure that you're, you're going to have things that you think, like my video games, are in quadrant four. But actually, look, if they're important to you, they're important to you. But as best you can, see what happens if you deliberately hang out in Quadrant 2 as much as possible this week. And I think you'll find that it's, it's not only quite a delightful way to spend your time, but it's over time an unbelievably productive one. Have fun, learn heaps, happy experimenting, and I'll talk with you soon. Mm -hmm.